Good morning. I'm Kat Kabira, and uh, I'm actually watching the sunrise right now. It's it's so beautiful. Um, I'm definitely a sunrise person. Um, you know, most people are sunset people, but like, no, like sunrises get me off. Um, I I'm that person who likes to wake up at 4 a.m. before everyone else because there's just this like quiet vibe and space of possibility uh, to drop into. Anyway. The reason why I'm making this video so early is so many of my students in our sessions this past week have all confessed the same theme. And I'm like, all right, we, we got to talk about this. So I'm so curious, especially if you have um, a history in you know training or practicing in yoga or meditation. How much do you feel that it's your spiritual practice or necessity to be able to just deal with things as they are? In other words, how much do you feel like you're meant to be able to tolerate a situation and that actually there's something wrong with you? Like maybe you, you, you don't have a strong enough practice, you're not as refined or as evolved as, as you want to be. Uh, because somehow the situation that you're in just isn't working, doesn't feel right for you, uh, but somehow you're failing because you're supposed to be okay with it. How many of you actually feel like I'm supposed to be able to deal with this or tolerate? And I don't know about you, but but for sure, you know, with, with all the trainings that I've done in... Um, various yoga and meditation practices you know that that's part of like the ingrained practice of like how do you be with what is you know how do you work with pain and as a separate like we could have a whole other discussion about working with sensations and 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 how to ride waves and i'm not talking about that um, when i say riding waves like riding the waves of sensations in your body um, but that there's this compulsion for some of us, not all of us, that when something isn't okay, even when our body's like, hey, you know what? Like, we got to move on from here. Like, this is not our yes. Um, this, is a, this, is, this is turning into a hell no. Instead of actually respecting that and being like, oh, okay, thank you. Like, I'll move on. <laughs> We're like, oh, there's something wrong with me. Like, I just... I just need to keep sitting and, and deal with this and somehow I'll become okay with it. And I, I remember I was working with a trauma therapist um, at one point. I've, I've done significant amounts of trauma therapy for myself. Um, and, and I was explaining to her the situation and she's like, you know, Kat, like, this is you like reflecting yourself as someone who has like have, has had a history of abuse where you feel like there's no way out except to somehow like tolerate and manage and go into survival mode just to be able to get through it. And did you know that the possibility actually is that you get to leave, you get to choose what you want, you're allowed to move on. And for sure, the the students that tend to get trapped in this, like, I'm supposed to be able to deal with this. I'm not allowed to ask for more. I'm not allowed to not like this. Um, for sure, there's a history of some sort of trauma. And, you know, trauma is like the catchphrase, right? And like people were like, there's the big trauma with the T and then the little trauma with the little T. And, you know, we're all a little bit traumatized because like this is planet Earth and what the fuck is happening. Um, but, you know, like more that our modus operandi of dealing with discomfort is somehow I'm just going to like minimize myself to be able to tolerate and get through. And... Also, it can be, especially for those who are a little bit more empathic or people pleasers, like energetically, it's like instead of your energy being all in yourself, it's all scattered outside. It's like, I know what everybody else wants and needs. 
and I'm completely bypassing and neglecting my own needs. Because if, if we are to throw in that maybe to really be uh, your brightest self, uh, to really own your incarnation is to also respect that you've got needs. There is nobody who doesn't have needs and to be really honest about them. Then suddenly it's like, well, maybe your decisions might change. Maybe you're allowed to say, I like this and I don't like this. And that maybe there are things that you might be putting up with that you actually don't have to put up with. Um, I know that that's a very, that, that was a wiring for me just with, again, the history of, of like mental, emotional, the, all the little, all the different levels of abuse that I was um, in that I just didn't know that you, you're allowed to actually not have this pain or chaos. And there can just be this frequency of discomfort, pain, or chaos in our system that's so normalized, it's so wrapped up in with ourselves that we don't even know that it doesn't have to be there. And, you know, especially like I'm making this video during the time of um, COVID and you know, I, I want to like rename this time, but, you know, this time um, where we are definitely dancing with our fears and, um, you know, survival mode and, you know, how do I just kind of tolerate things? And where our power is, is remembering that we actually have choice here and, and what do you want to create and, and what actually does work for you and that you're allowed to have needs and you're allowed to matter. So as a reiteration, I want you to look at that part of you that thinks I'm meant to be okay with something that's just not okay for me. And what if that's actually a disempowering belief that will not help you and actually will not help anyone? Because if you really want to like help people, then you better be like, you want to be your radiant self. You want to be in your truth. You want to be in your power. Um, it, you want to feel good. You know, no one wants to be around like a grumpy. I mean, you know, we do want to help you, but like there's going to be a much different vibe if you're very like sad, depressed, disconnected, giving yourself away in like sacrificial mode versus like empowered, feeling your joy, like looking at possibilities, like engaged with life. And, you know, I, what will help you engage with life? And are you allowed to say no? Are you allowed to step away? Are you allowed to want more? Um, I, I've worked with a lot of different communities over the years around the world um, and am really fascinated by oppression, right? Uh, fascinated by oppression. That sounds weird, but look, it's, it's 5.30 a.m., okay, so just bear with me. Um, but what I've looked at, whether we're looking at uh, certain populations, um, genders, um, you know, cultures, races, socioeconomic. I mean, you know, there's so many different ways that uh, we like to oppress one another. Uh, the one thing that keeps us in there is actually thinking, I'm not allowed to ask for more. You know, like, like the reason why, you know, we're able to say like, oh, you're right. There is something wrong with me. Yes, I am less than. But it takes the people to be like, fuck that. Like, I actually have some value and worth to actually start to make the shift or the change, you know, and we can look at that on a bigger level. And then also like on our own level, where are you making agreements in your life to be like, yeah, you're right. I'm not allowed to step out of this arena. This is where I belong. And, and we could think that, you know, there's so much research now finally coming out, um, but I've, I've seen it in people's systems now for like 20 years, like, yeah, our ancestry, our history, our generations, like that history, those thought processes, those belief systems are still alive in our system. You know, so as much as we want to pretend that we're like just this lifetime, it's like, yeah, no, we, we've got some archaic thoughts in there that cause us to both keep ourselves down and also cause us to keep other people down. Um, you know, if we're, if we're looking at even relationships between men and women, I mean, 
um, you know, we're still operating, you know, as much as we're like, oh, we're more free. Um, we're still operating with, um, you know, women are still property. That's still in the subconscious. Um, we are still second class citizens. Um, you know, we, we are, you know, our value is um, our ability to, uh, our sexual value, right? Being pretty. Um, you know, we don't really have worth beyond that. So it's, it's just getting honest with like the shit that we're all still carrying, you know, and, and I think in a way we're all starting to get a little bit more honest, but, um, you know, so I really want you to look to, at what are you still agreeing to that actually does not respect you, that does not respect your system, that does not respect your own incarnation. And will you give yourself permission? Do you have the guts to say, you know what? I don't like this. That's not okay. I don't want that. And actually, I'm going to say no to this and I'm going to say yes to that. That, your ability to say no to the things that don't serve you, instead of trying to tolerate, please no more toleration. If we want to make change, we got to actually be honest with that's a hell no and that's what I want. That's our power. We dream this world together. And, and we do not have to be okay with things. So that's my magic sunrise message to you from Perth, Western Australia. Have a wonderful day.